Thank you for staying with us on KTN Sunrise Live. Now, earlier on, we'd asked you the question uh, about devolution in this country and whether you think the rhetoric between the Senate and the National Assembly threatens the process of devolution. That all began with the Division of Revenue Bill and who was supposed to do what and some amendments that were made by the Senate, ignored by the National Assembly and assented to by the President. And now they're in the process of discussing now the allocation of those funds. And uh, we're also going to be talking about the role and job description of the Senate in the National Assembly. Perhaps in all the back and forth, uh, you may have gotten confused a little bit. Also, most importantly, what is the Senate doing about the county governments? We're seeing runaway spending, we're seeing lavish budgets, we're seeing uh, budgets that sometimes seem a little bit out of sync. Who tames the governors in this country? We're speaking with uh, Senator Boni Halwale, whom, as many of you remember, was the former member of parliament for Ikolomani. He is now the senator for Kakamega County, and he joins me this morning. Thank you very much you. for joining us. Let's just start off by reminding ourselves um, the job description, uh, or rather the mandate or the roles played by the Senate and the National Assembly. Uh, probably the right word to use is not job description. It would be what is expected mm -hmm. of uh, a member of parliament and, uh, on the other hand, the senator. All this has no difficulty. In fact, the uh, hype that has been put on the fight, the presumed fight between senators and MPs, is simply because of two reasons. One, some people don't want to look at the constitution, and two, people are still living in the bad old days of the African big man syndrome. Mm -hmm. Uh, those who care to look at the Constitution will realize that when it comes to the legislature, the Constitution has created three particular limbs. The first one is what is expected of Parliament. And Parliament is composed of the Senate and the National Assembly. This is found in Article 94 of the Constitution that says what is expected of both houses. Mm -hmm. And when you go on to 95, and then the constitution defines what is expected of the National Assembly. And 97 it tells you, and 96 tells you what is expected of the Senate. Mm -hmm. So to make it brief, uh, almost in one word, the National Assembly is expected to handle business that does not concern counties and the Senate is expected to handle business that concerns counties the only addition is that whereas uh, Senate will handle business that concerns counties any business that concerns money bills money bills is the preserve of the National Assembly and the background of this is that the Senate is limited to the county because they represent and protect the interests of the county government mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. its people. Mm -hmm. And the National Assembly, contrary to what people have been what MPs have been saying, mm -hmm. the MPs do not represent Kenya. The constitution is very clear. MPs do not represent the national government. Mm -hmm. Senators represent the county government, but MPs represent the people in their constituencies. Who that many would say are the people in the country. Well, you, you, you have your portion. You have your portion okay. as a member of parliament. Okay. If you are the MP for Ekolomani, mm -hmm. you represent the people in Ekolomani. And mm -hmm. your neighbor in Shinyalu mm -hmm. represents the people mm -hmm. in Shinyalu. Mm -hmm. And when you come to Nairobi, you, you pull it together. Okay. Then you represent all the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. However, it doesn't limit an MP from interrogating an issue arising from yeah. any other constituency in okay. Kenya. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, let's talk about that row then uh, that started uh, all of this offer. I think that perhaps brought to uh, the minds of Kenyans yes. uh, that there was something going on and it's about the division of revenue bill. Yes. Uh, like you said, the Senate handles uh, all matters to do with the counties. Yes. Um, you then made recommendations to that bill. Yes. It went to the National Assembly. Your yes. recommendations were not considered. 
that key among them being that you wanted 258 billion to go to the counties yes. they say 210 yes. and they argue that that is well over 30 percent of what uh, you know is supposed to go to the counties from the national budget yes what are your thoughts on that and you know uh, the events that took place after that i have talked to i have talked to all the mps mm -hmm. from kakamega county mm -hmm. 12 of them and most of the mps from what was formerly uh Western province, mm -hmm. and all of them would prefer a situation whereby the counties get m as much money as possible, right. i.e., they are in support of 258 billion. The only thing that led to the perception that the MPs prefer a lower figure was the failure of the leadership in the lower house. If the speaker of the National Assembly had come out and reminded the House that according to Article 110, mm -hmm. subsection 3, mm -hmm. the two speakers must consult on every bill before them. Mm -hmm. And if he had reminded them that having consulted, he had forwarded the matter in accordance with the Constitution to the Senate for deliberation, the debate would have ended there. But because he refused to do that, to me, my assumption is that uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly understands the Constitution, in fact, better than me. But I think there might be somebody controlling with remote control that uh, this is an opportunity for us to cut down mm -hmm. the Senate to size and hopefully uh, delay the full realization of the fruits of uh, a devolution. So the only reason why MPs came in, it is because of the African big man syndrome. For the first time, MPs have been alone in the country mm -hmm. but now here comes a senator mm -hmm. who is obviously looking bigger than him mm -hmm. because the senator of kakamega has got 12 uh, mps under him mm -hmm. so the mp then starts feeling that probably i'm being reduced uh, my cloud is now smaller let me uh, fight out so that it looks like i'm equal to the senator i tell you the consequences of what they are doing will not only be realized in the short term but even in the long term because in the just ended uh, election, mm -hmm. senators and governors literally held the hands of some of the candidates whom then they assisted to become okay. MPs. Senator, let's talk about the constitution for a moment because yes. uh, <coughs> you've referred to that quite a bit and it does talk about what is expected of the senators yes. uh, and of the National Assembly. Now when it uh, says that uh, the senators are um, going to deal with the allocation uh, yes. of the funds yes. and uh, the National Assembly talks about division yes. of that yes. uh, and so when we talk about the division of revenue bill um, According to some who interpret the Constitution, it says that the National Assembly is the one that says X amount will be retained by the national government and Y amount will go to the counties. Yes. And it is then up to the Senate to now deal with allocation of those funds. Yes. Uh, would you agree with that? And that if that be the interpretation from the Constitution, um, then that the National Assembly was right in what they did. They handle division of the resources, you handle allocation. In other words, you come and say, how much will go to Kakamega yeah. County, how much yeah. will go to Busia yeah. County, etc. I am going to be very brief on this, mm -hmm. because we deliberately agreed as senators that because we have approached the Supreme Court, if we go all out of the way discussing this matter, mm -hmm. then okay. because the matter is very active right. at the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. you now run the risk of the subjudice. Mm -hmm. However, division of revenue mm -hmm. cannot be done piecemeal. Division of revenue must be done wholesome, and wholesome means there is the vertical division of revenue and then the horizontal mm -hmm. division of revenue. Mm -hmm. If the Senate, as it is defined in the Constitution, is supposed to protect the interests of the counties, the stage of vertical division of revenue, mm -hmm. that is how much leaves the national government to, to go to down. the county government, right. the real time of protecting the county governments at that stage, because if unchecked, then the national government would only be too happy mm -hmm. to have as little money as possible going, uh, being divided vertically. Mm -hmm. So the Senate which has got that power, then the constitution went out of its way to ensure that it has that role in ensuring that vertical division of revenue between the two governments is not only done in accordance with the law, but as much as possible, we cut the desire of the national government in wanting that as 
limited amounts as possible of revenue goes to the uh, county government. And now, when you come to the horizontal division of revenue, that is the easier one. Mm. It, it actually Absolutely, it doesn't yes. call there because right. there is a formula there right. which is worked out by mm -hmm. the commission on revenue mm -hmm. allocation it doesn't call for, yeah. and things like that you, yes. you don't have to fight too much right. where the real fight is and you have seen it is mm -hmm. so hot that we have had to go to the supreme court mm -hmm. it is at that point okay yes. some would say that uh, all of this <coughs> was done by the 10th parliament yes. uh, in a bid to clip the wings of the senate um, and many of you who are in the senate today including yourself yes. senator were in the 10th parliament yes. Did you not see this coming? Or some would say that when Boni Halwale was member of parliament for Ikolomani, yes. uh, he was trying to curtail the powers of the Senate. And yes. then during the campaign, you decide, okay, I'm going to run for the Senate yes, instead. Yes. Uh, did the MPs not see this as a problem coming in during the 10th parliament, who now sit in the Senate and complain that this is a problem of the 10th parliament? The people who are making that uh, argument are perfectly correct. I happen to have made up my mind very early in time mm -hmm. to become senator. And if anybody cares to visit uh, the Hansard in the library, mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my contributions are there. When I was fighting now, mm -hmm. the, the committee, the select committee of parliament that went to Naivasha mm -hmm. to look at the recommendations of the, uh, the committee of experts, mm -hmm. which had created a senate that was superior to the National Assembly in accordance with bicameral uh, practice in the past international practices as obtained in the US, in Canada, mm -hmm. in Austria, and so, on, and, uh, and so on. So when these guys went to uh, Naivasha, they then realized that not all of them were going to run as governors. Mm -hmm. Not all of them were going to run as senators because to run at a county level, the calling is very challenging. Mm -hmm. So they said, fine, since we are going to be members of the assembly, let us make sure that we cede as little crown as possible. And therefore, they created a structure in our constitution which does not accord with the best international practices in bicameral uh, system of mm -hmm. uh, parliamentary practice. Right. So it is true that that was selfish. And this is why members of the public will realize that over and above approaching the Supreme Court in this particular contest, mm -hmm. we are also saying mm -hmm. at the end of the exercise, we are going back to Wanainji. They give us one million signatures mm -hmm. so that we go for a referendum and align our bicameral system with the best international practices. Meaning that uh, the Senate should be superior to the National Assembly? And that is called the best international practices. By the way, let me tell you, even when uh, this will have been settled, whereby it will be clear that the Senate is the upper house and the National Assembly is the lower house, the challenges will continue because even in the US, where we have a clear cut upper house and lower house, we still have problems. If you talk to a congressman mm -hmm. in the US, mm -hmm. When you ask him which one is the upper house and which one is the lower house, or when you ask him to which house do you belong, mm -hmm. he says, I belong in the <laughs> House of Representatives uh -huh. and the Senate is the other house. Uh -huh. They don't call it mm -hmm. the upper house. Right. So this will continue because um, of personal ego. But my problem is what stops people from making up their minds whether they want to belong to the upper house or the lower house. If you choose to go to the, low, to the upper house, the consequences are that you have a harder campaign, a more expensive campaign, and you have to live with the consequences. The risks of losing at the county level are higher because your clan does not have a, a big say. In some of the constituencies, uh, you, uh, literally it is your clan that determines whether you become an MP. Let me tell you, in, in a place like Ekolomani, mm. In perpetuity, we have had only two clans mm -hmm. claiming the seat because they are the ones which are most populous. This cannot obtain in Kakamega County because the clan becomes a non-significant mm -hmm. issue. So, um, in your view, yes. the Senate should be um, more senior or, or the upper house yes. um, because of what it takes to get there? No. The upper house in the sense that what was the spirit behind creating the bicameral system? We had lived with this system for almost 50 years. Mm -hmm. the, reason, the reason was there was the general feeling that the National Assembly required somebody to check mm -hmm. on some of their excesses. 
and this is what people kept on recommending mm -hmm. to the committee of experts that we need an upper house to check on the excesses of the lower house. Mm -hmm. This is now being drawn away uh, through this rhetoric and so on, mm -hmm. but it must not be lost on us that an all-powerful uh, parliament, a national assembly that is unchecked has the tendency to visit on the electorate excesses which they don't like, up to and including the famous issue of uh, the pay packages. Mm -hmm. It is because they're unchecked. If you noticed in the debate, mm -hmm. Senate was very quiet mm -hmm. because we were saying the Constitution created the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, mm -hmm. let it perform its function. And even in that deal that was signed, do yes. you benefit from that? Yes. That deal that was signed yes. uh, by the SRC, yes. allowing for more allowances, does yes. that um, apply to senators? Yes. Uh, what so you were the beneficiaries uh, of the process. Everybody, everybody in which has. You were very has, quiet. Uh, no, no, not in, in not in that sense. In the sense that senators cannot run away uh, from what MPs fought for, because the the end result has been that what MPs have gotten, senators have also. Mm -hmm. gotten. Mm -hmm. uh, so they should not pretend that they are holy, they're holier than thou and so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, benefiting from that uh, and that runaway spending, did you agree? Why was the Senate quiet when the members of National Assembly were pushing for better pay packs for themselves? Is it because you did not believe in what they were saying? If that be the case, why then benefit from it? Yes, I am one of the senators who came out mm -hmm. and spoke to it. And I said, what was taking place in the National Assembly was unhelpful and it was unnecessary. To the extent that having created the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, there is no room where an individual member of parliament, an individual senator, or a group of them, or all of them, can attempt to approach the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. Uh -huh. Because the same constitution that created SRC also created the Parliamentary Service Commission. Right. So if an MP, any senator has any complaint, he should channel it through the Parliamentary Service Commission, which under the Constitution mm -hmm. now has the local standby to, to go, go into to engagement okay. with the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. Right. That is how I differed with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it was in the approach? Yes, the approach was wrong. Okay. Yeah. But, but, but the but, money they were asking for, did you agree with that? The money they were asking for was neither here or there because the final word lay with the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. And if there was any attempt to, to change their decision, it could only, could only be done by the Parliamentary Service Commission. So it wasn't going to help if the Senator for Kakamega was going to shout that I want to be paid two, two million shillings a, mm -hmm. a, a, a month. It, it counted for nothing because nobody would listen. And for information, I'm convinced the Salaries and Remuneration Commission did not reach its decision based on what the MPs were saying. They did so because they engaged with the Parliamentary Service Commission. Of course, you must also take something away from Salaries and Remuneration Commission. Mm -hmm. it gave, they, 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 when they approached the matter, it looked like their brief was that they were meant to go and slash the salaries of members of Parliament. They should have started by understanding the roles of members of Parliament and the roles of senators vis-a-vis what they are expected to be paid, and then but decide whether to slash that. or yeah. keep it there or increase. But I think they did that. That was why they even uh, talked about, you know, the number of sittings that members of parliament would have. So, do you not mm. think that they did uh, due diligence the, the, while they, did they not. were? Yeah. They did not. Or if they did, mm -hmm. they ignored what they were told. Mm -hmm. I happen to be aware that uh, Speaker Marende made a very detailed presentation to the Salaries and Remuneration Commission that they went against what Speaker Marende said, it meant that either they did not listen to him or it was the famous culture of impunity that is very popular in Kenya, to this I, extent. Right. Allow me to say, though, that the brief perhaps to slash the members of parliament salaries could have come from the Kenyan public, that this is what the Kenyan public wanted? Yes, the Kenyan mm -hmm. public is just one of the stakeholders as E, as R, members of parliament, and as is the Parliamentary Service Commission. Let me tell you, uh, for example, when they said that they limit the sittings of mm -hmm. committees mm -hmm. to four sittings in a week, mm -hmm. that would completely have made it impossible for committees to discharge their mandate. I have been a chair of a very busy committee called Public Accounts for five years, mm -hmm. and because of the volume of work,
the number of audit reports that you're supposed to look at. Mm -hmm. If you were to sit only four times, you would never audit government. The government would have gone uh, away very happy mm -hmm. that there is no public accounts committee to check me because they do not have time. Okay. So I'm glad that that decision okay. was rescinded okay. uh, because those are the nitty gritties mm -hmm. of uh, operationalization that salaries and remuneration commission appeared not to be quite alive to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's just as we round up that issue of the yes. salaries, yes. Uh, as you say, you disagreed with the approach yes. that the members of parliament used. Yes. Was there any attempt to call your brothers and sisters from the National Assembly and say, okay, uh, we agree with you, the number of sittings should not be uh, curtailed to three or four in a week and that yes we do agree we need more money but this is not the way to go about it seeing as it's parliament it's you know one body separated into two houses was there any attempt by any member of senate to approach the members of national assembly and say you're not going about this the right way trying yes. to remove commissioners from the yes, src yes, yes. isn't the right way yes it was very unfortunate attempting to remove members of the commission mm -hmm. attempting to remove vat and stuff mm -hmm. like that attempting mm -hmm. to slash the salary of the president, president uh -huh. that was not helpful in any way but, but the failure is mm -hmm. not because of one senator or some senators mm -hmm. it is because the only person who can call the two houses are the speakers of the two houses. Mm -hmm. They should have consulted and called for an informal sitting. Mm -hmm. We call it in parliamentary palace uh, Kamkunji. Yes. And then call a joint Kamkunji and we could have discussed this thing. Uh, so that I don't offend uh, members of the National Assembly who I respect very much. Mm -hmm. uh, a very large percentage of the current members of parliament are freshers and therefore the depth and breadth of these things can mm -hmm. easily escape them especially in the first months in the national assembly mm -hmm. they needed to have listened to us okay. but unfortunately you can't do that because you're the speaker and if you attempt they'll tell you you are just elected like myself right. what the hell do you think <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you <laughs> all right let's talk about indeed and you've mentioned how the, yeah. the two uh, the speakers of the two houses can come together yeah, yes. uh, and you know and talk about that and of course now uh, the focus is on how the two houses handle bills it is the focus of an article in today's daily nation it is on page six i'm sure we'll get a shot of that yeah. and it's a bickering over who handles which bill when and at what point and i think drawing from what happened with the division of revenue yes. bill let's talk about that because yes. uh, what are the rules on that when you are discussing a bill you're supposed to um, consult the national assembly and vice versa the mother of all the laws in this country that are on the statute books is the constitution and the constitution is not ambiguous at all in subsection 3 of article 110 and when ng these days have laptops they are already they have already gone to eat yes. <laughs> it it makes it so clear that every bill mm -hmm. all bills mm -hmm. must first of all receive attention from both speakers okay. and when both speakers are meeting it is it is not just two people meeting is a committee of the speaker of the national assembly and a committee led by the speaker of the senate they should sit however briefly however long mm -hmm. to decide whether this bill concerns one house mm -hmm. or both houses mm -hmm. when that decision is made then the process starts going it does not cost the speaker of the national assembly anything in having a consultation mm -hmm. with the speaker of the senate for some strange reason, and I know Justin Muturi, I was uh, with him in the ninth parliament before he lost. Mm -hmm. He is a very good member of parliament and he is a very senior magistrate. He was a senior magistrate yes. before. That's right. yeah. So to me, Muturi was supposed to perform even better than Marende. I'm not saying he's performing less, <laughs> okay. but uh, he should have performed. But why he doesn't consult the Speaker of the Senate, it beats me. And, and, and he knows these things. He owes it to us as Kenyans. And we are going to repeat. We will not get tired mm -hmm. reminding Muturi mm -hmm. that if it is a question of his ego that is disturbing him, we don't care about the ego of Ekwe Etro or that one of Muturi. We want the two men to sit in accordance with Article 110 of the Constitution and determine on every bill which bill does not concern the county. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you. If there is a desire, and I suspect that desire might be there, in the heart of the executive, 
and in his mind that devolution should be slowed, then the only institution he can use to achieve that is the National Assembly. The late President Kenyatta used the National Assembly to kill mm -hmm. the Senate. Do you think that's what's happening now? The signs are there for Kenyans to see, and I'm afraid we must say uh, the signs don't look good. But fortunately this time, the Constitution has ensured that the National Assembly does not have enough strength to kill the Senate. For that to happen, mm -hmm. you have to go back to the people mm -hmm. through a referendum. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you, in a referendum, that people are choosing between having the Senate or not having it, killing devolution or letting live, even in Kiambu, where the president comes from, even in Katundo, where he was born, mm -hmm. we will get an overwhelming yes for the continuance of with the continuation of devolution. Okay. Yeah. What do you intend to do uh, should this, um, you know, situation persist, uh, where we don't have consultation between uh, the two houses over bills uh, that are before them? What is the intent of the Senate? Oh, it's very easy, and uh, the, the easier one is politic. You know, right now we are we are being legalistic mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we want to be seen as a house that respects the rule of law. So. Once we find that the political approach that the Speaker of the National Assembly is using and some elements in the executive are using is the one that wants to threaten devolution, we are going to approach it politically and already we have put a structure on the ground, namely we have created an organ composed of sen all the senators, all the governors and all the speakers of the county assembly. We shall uh, ignite that particular organ and when we hit the ground running, the executive will have no chance. The National Assembly will have no chance. We are going to overrun them, and the one inch will give us one million signatures, and we'll, uh, we'll seal those little loopholes that are the ones that they want to capitalize on to threaten devolution. So the answer is we will go political. Right now, we are being gentlemen and ladies in ensuring that we are seen to be an organ in the Constitution that respects the rule of law and this is why we have gone to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. If we find that it has not been sufficiently addressed, we go back to an NG. And if they decide they don't want devolution, we are not going to, to commit suicide. We are senior politicians. We can choose either to run for higher office or if we find that there isn't enough space to run for higher office, mm -hmm. we will go back to, the, to our constituencies and defeat those MPs. We have been defeating them over the years anyway. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's talk about the governors for a moment now, um, because I think the focus is on governors, the county budgets are being made, uh, we're seeing 50 million shillings in one county, although I'm sure he's now rescinded that, you know, f uh, fighting uh, pornography. Yes. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> We're seeing other governors who are living in hotels. Yes. We're seeing others who are saying Rais Ndioyo, Amengia Tafadali, Makofi. What are your thoughts on what's happening with the governors right now? Um, we have refused to join the fray mm -hmm. uh, as attempted by the National Assembly of calling governors' names. Mm -hmm. It is wrong. Those are elected leaders like us. We should not call them names. However, we have chosen to take advantage of the provisions of the Constitution, which allow that Parliament shall enact legislation mm -hmm. to address anything that concerns Kenyans, anything that concerns counties. Mm -hmm. To this end, I have moved and created the first bill. Mm -hmm. Three more are, 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 are in the offing, mm -hmm. but let me talk about the first one. Mm -hmm. The first one is to address the ego of governors. In this sense, I have a bill which has been published this week. It will come for the first reading. Mm -hmm. It is called the National Flags, Emblems and Titles Bill. What this bill attempts to do is to create order so that since governors are starting to call themselves His and Her Excellency, mm -hmm. we have chosen in this bill to give titles to all state officers, starting with the president, the president and his deputy, will be the only ones, if this bill becomes law, who will be entitled to be called, being called His or Her Excellency. Mm -hmm. Governors will be only be called Mr. Governor. Okay. Senators will be called Mr. Senator. Members of Parliament will be called Honorable Members of the National Assembly. And members of the county assemblies 
will be called Honorable Assemblymen and Honorable Assemblywomen. Okay. That removes that doubt. So that again, never again should you hear on podium people calling governors His Excellency or Her Excellency. Mm -hmm. On the issue of the flag, it is important that the governor is given respect. He's the CEO of his county and therefore he yeah. should stand out okay. even in the presence of the center. So we are allowing him mm -hmm. to fly a flag. But the flag he flies mm -hmm. is conditional mm -hmm. in the sense that initially I had wondered that they fly only county flags, mm -hmm. but I saw a threat in it. Right. That if you allow him to, to fly a county flag, yes. then you will be adding fodder to that uh, thing, Puani CEO. Kenya. That's right. And now so, every other place can be CEO Kenya. Yes. Uh -huh. So I thought about it and said, now let us allow the governor to fly a flag so that he is forever reminded uh -huh. that his county is part of okay. Kenya. Uh -huh. Only that this flag, he should fly it while he is in his county. Okay. The moment he departs from his county, he should move around like Mwanenji wa Kawaida, Akaya Kamaraya. So that is as far as the flag is concerned. Uh -huh. uh, the other officers we have allowed to fly the flag is the President, Deputy President, Chief Justice, uh -huh. Cabinet Secretaries, and the Attorney General, and the, the two speakers uh -huh. of the two houses. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is one of those, uh, the f one of the first uh, that you have put there. Um, what about uh, statements that we're hearing from the National Assembly that they want to clip, uh, you know, the wings of governors? But even before we get to that, <laughs> let's define the role of a governor. Yes, um, yes. And, you know, the work that he's supposed to do, because saying that he's a CEO of a county uh, can be a bit of a broad and general yes, description. Yes. In your yes. view, um, what should be expected of the governor? Uh, to say that you want to clip the wings of the governor is a threat to devolution. It would be wrong to attempt to ambiguously clip the powers of the governor. The governor must have real powers mm -hmm. because we did not want a county government to be a creature in theory. It is not hypothetical. Okay. It is real. It must have real powers. Mm -hmm clear distinct from the powers of the national government. Mm -hmm. So to attempt to clip the powers of the governor is threatening the devolution. However, you should create a statute that makes it possible for the governor not to abuse the role of being a CEO. Mm -hmm. The reason why this is very important and uh, uh, Senator Wako is currently working on it mm -hmm. is because the drafters of the constitution failed us. If you read the whole constitution, there's nowhere where they define the role of the governor. They have gone on and defined clearly in two, three pages the role of the president. But when it comes to the functions of the governor, they have written only one statement. The governor shall be the CEO, CEO right. of the county government. Mm -hmm. This has created a lot of loopholes, but Honorable Wako, Senator Wako, is now working on it. I mm -hmm. talked to him yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's at a very advanced stage, and therefore the country should, be, should, should wait for uh, that uh, particular um, discrepancy to be sealed. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of the danger of that statement is being seen in the manner in which governors have drawn budgets. Mm -hmm. Governors have been, and I'm sorry to use this word, have been so unreasonable to the extent that it is starting to have a pattern, and I made this statement over the weekend, mm -hmm. that if you allow me to use tribes, governors from what was formerly Nyanza province and governors from what was formerly Western province, inhabited by Luos predominantly and lawyers, they better be careful. They seem to be the ones who are on an ego trip when it comes to spending. At the end of five years, when it downs on them that counties will be competing, counties of the Abaluya and counties of the Luos will become a laughing stock because it is only in Nyanza where you have a governor who lives five minutes away from his residence but staying in a hotel, charging it to the county government. A governor who wants to buy 17, 16 Prados mm -hmm. to run the, the, to, to give to the executive committee mm -hmm. is only in, in, in Western, Kakamega and Bungoma in particular, mm -hmm. where, for example, the governor of Kakamega 
wants to buy land for construction of county headquarters at 150 million shillings and yet in Kakamega we do not have a problem of land mm -hmm. we do not have a problem county offices the offices that were previously the premises for the provincial commissioner right. they are there begging for occupation for county headquarters the offices that were the headquarters of the Kakamega County Council they are there the offices where they were the headquarters of the Kakamega municipality are there why would the governor of Kakamega ever want to buy land or ever want to spend money on construction of headquarters it is an unnecessary expenditure similarly to Bungoma Bungoma and Kakamega, these governors have awarded themselves uh, millions of shillings for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Kakamega, 43 million. Uh, Bungoma, 53 million. Bungoma going further, 50 uh, million for pornography and right. so on. Is pornography such a problem in Bungoma? In Bungoma, in fact, <laughs> por pornography does not exist at all because uh, this is a very... Uh, uh, a community that is highly cultured. Senator, maybe people will remember, yes. uh, you know, what happened in Muliro Gardens and the yes. pictures that went around on the internet about things that were happening there. Yes. Uh, is it a valid point that perhaps, uh, you know, there could be issues with that? In fact, what, 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 what took place in Muliro Gardens mm. was not pornography. It was, was indecent it? behavior okay. by an individual right. who should have been arrested. Mm -hmm. And we know him uh, because I come from Kakamega. I know the guy. The guy comes from Shinyalu constituency. Mm -hmm. I can even tell you he comes from uh, uh, Mukomari sublocation. <laughs> he should have been arrested uh -huh. and charged for indecent behavior. That was not pornography. Right. It would have amounted to pornography. Mm -hmm. If what that guy did was being sold to the, to the youth, he was not doing it and then parading himself before the youth the way the, the strip teasers were doing in Mutuapa. Mm -hmm. No. This guy was just uh, irresponsibly trying to exercise his <laughs> sexual rights in the manner that okay. he was doing. That was not pornography. All right. But we is there are, somebody else that took that and put that on the internet? Well, that was, not the internet. The that, that was not the internet of Kakamega. So it was, it was the internet of, it was the internet of Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay. no, no, no. All right, okay. no. let's move away from that. But yes, I do get your point. Yes. <laughs> I do get your point. Yes. But yes, yes, runaway spending on pornography, on yes. entertainment, yeah, yeah. and on things like that. Okay. Yes. So we, 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 because of work was built, and uh, Senator Sang is also working uh, on something which is related, an amendment to the County Government Act, so that budgets of counties mm -hmm. before the, after they get assent from the county assemblies mm -hmm. they will come to the senate for concurrence and therefore and in an area where a, an overbearing governor has overrun his county assembly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when this particular budget comes to the senate for concurrence then the necessary amendments will be made and this will not uh, in any way hurt the public kenyans will remember that the control of budget has been attempting to give the impression that she's going to bring a controller of budget bill mm -hmm. that will address this. It can't. Why not? The controller of budget, uh, through her, le her le legislation, mm -hmm. cannot attempt to control the county government because the constitution speaks to this. It says the county government and the national governments are two independent mm -hmm. governments. They mm -hmm. can only interrelate. Mm -hmm. So if the control of budget attempted, she's a member of the, the national government. Right. If she attempted to control the governor, the governor That's need not uh, respect what she has said because she will be going contrary okay. to the constitution. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That, that, yeah. So the answer is in what we are Senate. doing at the Senate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's also talk about the audit process and we had the Auditor General with yeah. us here last week yes. and we're talking about the fact that at the end of the financial year yes. they will expect reports yes. uh, from the county governments yes. as to how they have spent uh, the money over the last uh, 12 months. Yes. What role will you play um, in that one? Should those reports come to the Senate? Will they? Let's understand that process exactly. because the counties are under the Senate. Exactly. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me start by uh, advising the controller of budget, uh, my sister Agnes, to go listen to what Ouko is saying. Ouko is the one who is right because the constitution is the one that mandates Ouko to audit all public funds. And because the, the funds at the county government are public funds, when the controller, uh, I mean the auditor general, Ouko, audits them, he's 
operating in line with the Constitution. So what Uko is doing is the right thing. However, the last parliament failed in the hurry to make laws in the middle of the night as we used to do when we were making the standing orders in relation to the Senate, we failed. When we created oversight committees, we failed to create the oversight committee that would be called, that would be similar to public accounts committee of the National Assembly. Okay. So there is no such a committee. Meaning, Senate mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. does not have a committee mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that can then oversight that right. particular expenditure. Okay. Honorable Orengo is leading us in this area. He's, uh, he's leading a committee that is making sure that we overhaul the standing orders of the Senate so as to address such matters and many others mm -hmm. that were left begging because in the last parliament there was no Senate and these things were being done by a National Assembly that was conservative. Mm -hmm. It didn't want to give as much power to the Senate as it should have. Do you think the Office of the Auditor General has the teeth to bite and say because they do make recommendations in their annual report yes. and say that this county has misused funds in this exactly. and this way yes. and this is what we recommend. Does anybody listen to their recommendations? Yes. You sat in, yes. in Parliament. Were any of the recommendations made by the Auditor General's uh, office taken into account and push for prosecution, perhaps, yes. of yes. individuals who've mismanaged funds? In theory, the office of the Auditor General has teeth. But those teeth are best on the assumption that there will be goodwill on the part of the executive to implement right. the recommendations uh -huh. of the office of the auditor general there are two signs that are starting to mean to me that it is business as usual as far as the Uhuru government is concerned because while in the last 10 years the Kibaki government was not paying attention to the recommendations of the auditors through the Public Accounts Committee, the Uhuru government has sent the first warning shot that they are going to do business in the same manner. How? They have given the Office of the Auditor General limited funds. Starving the officer of Edward Ouko is the beginning of failing oversight. So I want to urge members of the National Assembly, because they are the ones who are responsible for appropriation of the national budget, mm -hmm. to fight and ensure that Edward Ouko has enough funds at his disposal to do proper audit. Not just the traditional audits. We want, we, yeah, uh, no. yeah. we want audits that capture value for money. Mm -hmm. Money should not just be seen to have constructed a dam, uh, to have been released to go and construct a dam. Mm -hmm. The audit should report the quality of, of the dam yes. that was constructed. And how lives have been changed have been as changed a result. As, as, as a okay. result of right. that. Okay. I, you, you remind me of the very bad experiences I went through as the chair of public accounts uh, when the executive chose to ignore me. We moved wonderful motions including the stealing of money at Dilaru that is responsible for printing Kenya currency, where the public lost over 1.8 billion. Nothing happened. Members of parliament uh, were whipped, and in the process, they defeated a wonderful uh, report. You all remember. You remember the story of uh, Grand Regions Hotel. You remember the story of privatization of uh, Telecom Kenya. Mm -hmm. This was because the government was not, the, the executive was not willing to listen to parliament. And the consequences of what they did are being felt now. Only that Kenyans we tend to forget very quickly. Mm -hmm. Today, <clears throat> we are paying for contracts uh, that run in billions of shillings in the names of the mm -hmm. security contracts of Golden Bank, mm -hmm. in the names of Kenren Fertilizer Factory, contracts that were never executed. The fertilizer factory was never built in Kenya, and yet today we still pay billions of shillings every year to service that particular loan. While we're on that, what are your thoughts on what's happening with the National Cereals and Produce Board in that 500 million shillings that they are set to pay to ERAD contractors, even though no supply uh, was done? Exactly. This thing is not as shallow as it looks, mm -hmm. and it is not as new as people want to think. When I moved as the chairman of public accounts on the May scandal, 
and attempted to move, um, uh, not attempted, actually moved a motion of no confidence in the then Minister for Agriculture, uh, His Excellency, Deputy mm -hmm. President. Mm -hmm. This was the bigger picture, that the corruption that was going on at the National Cereals and Produce Board was responsible for all that was taking uh, place and which was the reason why the government was losing mm -hmm. billions of shillings. Mm -hmm. Now that this has come to pass mm -hmm. as a motion that was defeated, the components of that global challenge are the ones which are now emerging as that contract that went to this shady contractor called Mr. Juma. Mr. Juma is a friend of mine. He comes from my community. Uh, my daughter did internship in his company and uh, I, would, I would not wish to speak ill of him, but what they did was wrong they should not have made that claim of half a billion shillings. Right. They don't deserve to be paid. Okay. No. Let's uh, talk politics for a moment. Yes. Uh, and at the beginning, because you are a politician, at the beginning of, of the Senate and, you know, when you all came into power and there was the constitution of these committees, you found yourself out in the cold. Yes. In some of those <sighs> committees in uh, the Senate. And it was all about an agreement that had been made between the party that you belong to and the Jubilee Alliance on collaboration and you are seen to not be towing the line precisely I do not uh, regret having been thrown out of the two committees neither do I blame uh, the, the president and the deputy president who expressed their wish not to have me in that committee of course the leader of the majority who implemented that wish uh, d d did not have the cloud to make that kind of decision and therefore that is why I let the bug to stop at the door of uh, the president and his deputy. I don't blame them because they know me. Uh, we are edge mates and we have worked together and they know I have a history of standing up against corruption. And if I had become the chairman of the finance committee, mm -hmm. I would be the same rubber wrestler that I was in public accounts and probably I would have caused them a lot of discomfort. For example, the chairman of finance is supposed to defend the government uh, in any, in quotes, wrongdoing on the floor of the Senate. I would not defend the government. So they did well not to have me. I was, go I was going to instead use that position uh -huh. to expose uh, uh, wrongdoing. But more importantly is uh, what was the politics and what was the implication. The implication was somebody was thinking that I become the chair of that committee and I be controlled. At my age, my experience, and education in life, you cannot control my thinking. That is the worst dehumanization you can do to a human being, worse off to a leader. If I am not independent minded, I have no business attempting to represent my county, attempting to represent my people, I should instead fold up and go back to theater. I start operating people with their hernias and <laughs> prostates and stuff. Uh, you are supposed to oversight the government. Oversighting the government does not mean you make them your enemies. It does not mean you hate them. You tell them this is permissible, this is not permissible, and as a representative of the people, under the Constitution, I don't agree with you, you should stop it, because if you don't do it, Wanjiko on the streets does not have the tools to oversight the government. In fact, mm -hmm. under Article 1 of the Constitution, Wanjiko exercises her sovereign power through the elected member. So if she has elected you and you don't oversight, it means you are being paid for the wrong reason. You are stealing from Wanjiku. You are driving your car, not on petrol, but on the blood of Wanjiku. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about politics for a moment. What did party leader Musalia Mudavadi have to say about you getting thrown out of the finance committee? Because we understand it was an agreement between UDF and the Jubilee Alliance. Musalia Mudavadi has a signed agreement between himself and Jubilee. I did not subscribe to that uh, particular agreement. I refused to attend the meeting. I gave him my opinion that please uh, don't sign this thing for the simple reason that the, the leaders of Jubilee had a history of having failed to respect any agreement between themselves and the UDF. You'll remember Mudavadi was the Jubilee presidential candidate, but they reneged on this. So I told him, it is too soon for us to, for, to, to, to forget, don't go that route. And he went on and signed 
and I think at the back of the Wamalua's mind mm -hmm. and at the back of Mudavadi's mind, mm -hmm. they were thinking that they would partake of the positions uh, of appointment. And I'm glad the time has uh, proved me right. None of them has been appointed. Not even their associates have been appointed. The two ladies who were appointed from uh, Luyaland have nothing, nothing to do with Mudavadi and uh, Wamalua. I don't even think they had ever met in their lives <laughs> before they got those particular uh, appointments. So it was a waste of time. There's nothing to show for the so-called working relationship between Jubilee and UDF. If I was the party leader of UDF, I would take advantage and bold out. Because right now, there is an opportunity begging for Mudavati to do opposition politics, but he's wasting time thinking that he's doing government politics when he's not in government. That is the tragedy. What position does this put you in, in the party? Because you speak very openly, and as you've said, you are an independent yeah. mind. Yeah. What position does this put you in, in UDF, when you make statements such as this against your party leader? It is not against the party leader. It is against the position of the party because when the party leader floated that idea, the majority of leadership in UDF agreed with him. So it becomes the position of UDF. But because with the benefit of hindsight, they now realize that there's nothing that they are getting out of this, I believe they should swallow their pride and accept that there is nothing to take home from this agreement. Where does it leave, it leave me? No. Uh, I cannot be limited by a political uh, party leader to the extent that when I stood up against President Kibaki uh, in uh, uh, throwing out Kimunya, mm -hmm. Kibaki never de whipped me. When I attempted to throw out uh, Ruto, Raila's minister, uh, I mean, Raila's minister, Raila never de whipped me because Kibaki and Raila had matured politically. But this the whipping that we are seeing, if Mudavadi attempts to whip me, he'll only be proving that he hasn't matured the way Mudavadi, I mean, the way Raila and uh, Kibaki had matured. You can see, because of that political immaturity, uh, the president and his deputy threw me out. They whipped me. I'm hoping that sooner or later they realize the wisdom that they also, at some stage, they need somebody, they need a group of senators, a group of MPs, who can expose the rot of corruption that is usually perpetuated not by the president, not by the deputy president, by senior officers in their government. So when an MP, when a senator is doing that for them, he's doing their work. He's helping their government to succeed. So to that extent, the president Kibaki had matured. To that extent, Raila Odinga had matured. I remember uh, at the height of the Ruto motion of censure, mm -hmm. I met uh, Raila and he paid for my lunch. And he said, you young man, you're causing us a big headache. He did not deny me lunch because... <laughs> <laughs> okay. yes. You have been known for your fiery statements. I think everybody remembers Kimonia must go. Indeed. Here's another statement that you made, and we've gotten this question on Twitter, saying, what did you mean when you said that women's reps and women's senators' jobs is to carry handbags in and out of Bunge? What did I mean? <laughs> Remind me? What is that? <laughs> what is that? Women's it? reps and women senators, their jobs is to carry handbags in and out of Bunge. Women reps mm -hmm. and women senators. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how somebody is attributing that kind of statement to me. To the best of my recollection, and I, I, I tend to have a clear mind, I don't <laughs> remember uh, having made that utterance because I happen to know mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the role of a woman rep mm -hmm. and the role of a woman senator. A woman rep is not a woman rep. Mm -hmm. She is a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Only that through the approach of w the name woman rep, mm -hmm. she was being given affirmative action so that Daisy, for example, mm -hmm. who has been brought through affirmative action. For five years, the young lady from Desa Kanaiza mm -hmm. is going to learn the ropes of politics enough now mm -hmm. to be able to face it out, mm -hmm. uh, face it off mm -hmm. with men. Let me give you an example. An example is Honre Bombarire. Mm -hmm. Mbarire was right. given affirmative right. action right. to yes. come to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And in five years, she proved herself and, and she, she has become very elect. powerful. Yes. She has won elections twice. Mm -hmm. So this affirmative action is good. The advice I want to give women reps mm -hmm. is that they should not be possessed by the fact that they're women reps. 
Mm -hmm. They should take that five years as a learning process mm -hmm. so that they are not like uh, Honorable Amin Abdallah who has been nominated in perpetuity. She should have given that to somebody else so that herself having learned the robes, she, go for competition. she goes for competition. So they should not sit pretty uh, in the comfort zone. They should in fact hate the fact that they are women reps saying that why should I be here on affirmative action? Let me the next time win an election. Mm -hmm. Election is about competition and this is why in the constitution and ladies you'll bear this with me you'll bear me out. In the constitution affirmative action has been put there for only five years, mm -hmm. for only 20 years already five years is gone. Right. So they are remaining with only three rounds. Three times, so yes. if people want to live in the comfort zone that one day I'll go to parliament one day I'll go to National Assembly Senate mm -hmm. through affirmative action. You can only do it for the next 15 years. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, you better prepare yourself for a real fight. Even in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and U.K., there is no such affirmative action. And those are the so-called mature democracies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, no. all right. Uh, let's stay, go back to the issue of uh, your party leader. He recently said uh, at a function in Western that, you know, 2013 was just round one. He was just getting his, his feet wet and that he plans to run again in 2017. As you are now, would you support his bid for the presidency in 2017? Let me tell you. Politics is not static. It's dynamic. As uh, Winston Churchill said, one week in politics is a very long time. Between mm. now and 2017, mm. so much water will have passed under the bridge mm. that I cannot appear before the public this morning and tell them that I'll be offering myself mm -hmm. as a supporter of Honorable Mudabadi. No. The configuration that we shall use to approach the next election might not necessarily be UDF. It might not be, in fact, it might not necessarily be UDF, Jubilee, Code, and what have you. Things will change. Mm -hmm. And yes. at that time, we will decide who to support. Who knows? It may Maybe not be people, UDF. Be, it might not be UDF. <laughs> who knows? It might be Muslim Dawidi, presidential candidate that mm. will be supporting. Mm. It might be a candidate from another community. Mm -hmm. It might be a group of other op uh, politicians expecting that I offer myself as a presidential candidate. If that comes to pass, you can't take it away from them. So uh, politics change, you right. know. Okay. It is so up it's to, too early for him to make that early. statement? It is up to Mudawadi and myself to do our politics so well that we become attractive to Kenyans, not to lawyers. Uh, <laughs> okay. Getting votes of lawyers is not a problem to me. A oh. problem is, can you appeal to Kenyans? Because the president we want, Kenya is not dying to have a lawyer president. Mm. Kenya is dying to have a president who will advance the, uh, the, the frontier of democracy and good governance. All right. yes. Our final question to you this morning, Senator. A hundred days is being marked today of the Uhuruta administration. What are your thoughts on what they've been able to achieve or not? If I was uh, any of those two gentlemen, because they are very prayerful people, they like praying, I would go and ask for prayers. They are doing so badly that even if you ask a class six student, he will tell you something's wrong. Why? Comparing NAC 2004 and Jubilee 2013, 100 days into office, Wamalwa Kijana and Mwai Kibaki had brought over 1.5 million children into school. Those children who had been locked out for whatever reasons mm -hmm. because of the free primary education program. But 100 days into their tenure into office, because of their famous laptop project, in fact, let me call it infamous, in famous laptop project to the children, mm -hmm. they have caused all the children in Kenya out of public schools. They have failed. Uru and Ruto have failed. If they start on that score, they are going to start rising. That the country is still in the election mood, 100 days after election, it speaks to the fact that the country is not yet satisfied that the election is over because they are not seeing the leadership that they wanted to come out of the election. So they have to work over time. They stop behaving the way they do, putting on similar shirts, similar ties. That does not prove anything. That is, uh, those are stunts, you know. Those antiques do not uh, improve governance. They move away from it. They move away from cameras. We would like to see the president emerging from State House when a matter of grave national importance is to be spoken to when he's offering the way forward but to keep on
talking, I shall do, I will do, I will do. That is electioneering. It is no longer about discussing his manifesto. It is about implementation. And we want our children in school. There's so much confusion that the teachers think the strike has been called off, and yet the government is yet to open the schools. The minister closed the schools. The teachers were told to go to school. Which schools could Sosion take the teachers to? It is pathetic, and we will not support them. We will continue ensuring that we make President Uhuru unpopular until he starts doing the right thing. You cannot expect us to keep quiet. 99% of the schools in Kakamega are public schools. It's not like in central province where they have almost 40% of their children in private academies. It means life has come to a standstill in my county. How on earth would I support that kind of approach? They have failed in their 100 days, but because there are many more 100 days mm -hmm. to come in these five years, mm -hmm. we want to help them by pointing it out to them that they are not doing, getting it right. We help them in succeeding because when they succeed, we all are happy. People in our county have succeeded. The laptops project? The laptop project, I do not want to be misunderstood, at least of all by my professional colleagues, uh, that I am against computer education for our children. I support it and I support it fully. However, my beef is with the matrix of implementation. If the bottom line is we want our children to be, to have access to computer knowledge, then the way they are doing it is wrong. The appropriate technology would be that instead of giving a laptop to every child in class one, something that will cause learning to stop in all the classes in the primary school because children will be waiting in order to bring sense into it. The appropriate thing is take that money, just a little bit of it, construct a computer laboratory in each primary school. Then at eight in the morning, the head teacher will decide at eight, it is class one. At, at, at nine, it is class two. At 10, it's class four, and so on and so forth. And all the children in the primary school will have access to computer education, and it will be done cheaply. In fact, this money is so available that it would have been used to pay the striking teachers. The striking teachers, because of the fatigue of not having a salary, because of the fatigue of, of the pain of seeing the children they love out of school, because of the fatigue that their leaders were going to be jailed, have given in. The problem has only been postponed. This was an opportunity for Uhuruto to solve this problem once and for all and pay the teachers. And by the way, there's so much money in Kenya to pay the teachers. The 15 years ago promise was pegged on the revenue collection that was being done at that, at that time, time, which was around 180 mm -hmm. billion shillings. Mm -hmm. Today we collect over 960 mm -hmm. billion shillings. Surely we can be able to meet the promise that was given 15 years ago. It is nothing. They're just lying. They don't want to do it. There's no goodwill. All right. Yeah. We leave it at that. We thank you so much Welcome. for your time uh, this morning. It's always a pleasure talking to you and finding out what plans that you have indeed for the county governments as well and the plans within the Senate. We wish you all the best for those bills. Thank you very much. Been speaking to Senator Bonnie Halwa.